Hey everybody, this is Total Gamer Junkie. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. So in today's video, I want to talk, talk to you about these two games that I've uh, pledged money to on Kickstarter that I think you should as well. You don't have to, I'm not saying you have to, but these are two games that interest me and I thought I'd um, let you all know what they were. Now before I get into this, uh, I just want to let you all know that in three days, Life is Strange Waves Issue 6 is going to be out on the 26th. So I will be uploading a video of that to, I'll be uploading my reading to YouTube. And I'll also be, uh, what's it called, I'll also be playing, I believe, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Odyssey The Fate of Atlantis Episode 3, because I believe that comes out on the 26th as well. There are a bunch of other games that come out on the 26th as well. Um, what was it? I got them written down somewhere, but I know um, The Sinking City comes out on the 25th if you pre-order the Necronomicon edition. Not on the 20th, and it comes, the regular edition comes out on the 27th. But anyways, um, let's get into this video. So the first game um, that you're looking at, it's called, it's a trailer for a game called Raw. Now Raw is a sandbox MMORPG with, that focuses on realism. And I remember I was, because I saw the trailer on online on YouTube and I was like, um, it reminded me of this other game called Identity where you could play as a cop or, or a gas attendant. Basically, you play as a regular person. You do what you want in the world. Now, um, I want to read what it says here on Kickstarter and I'll also be leaving a link to it in the description below. So, the player acts as a citizen of the island state. The game offers a wide range of game styles and features. Players can own land, use air, water, and land transport, build houses, work for the state, or find a private job as as well as organize their own businesses. Oh, sorry, as organize their own business. I assume you could get businesses in the, if you leveled up more. In almost any field of activity, you can be on the side of the law or go beyond it, or just fool around alone or with your friends. So basically, you could be... You could work in a gas station, you could work as a shopkeeper, you could be a police officer, a detective, a criminal, um, a drug dealer basically. And uh, it says here, the main influence on us had uh, my life. What? I didn't get that, that's what this says. Uh, we really liked the idea and we thought that this me me mechanics can be much deeper and we can make it much more interesting. Other games have influenced us is Rust and GTA. So after the release, you can expect a mix of those games, but with unique mechanics. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, we have long thought whether to start this project, because at the time, some projects in RP genre already already been announced, like Identity for one. We weighed everything and still decided to take a risk, but the idea was to make the game mechanics so di as different as possible from the already announced project. Our disadvantage is that we started our project later and we will not look as original as we could, but on the other hand, this situation gave us an advantage, because we already knew what to expect from similar projects and therefore we could bring to our mechanics a lot of new elements that other games of this genre did not ha do not have. Our game is essentially a platform which will be polished a long time after release, so that's good, we can expect uh, updates on it. Um, long after release, so that could be years, like, if you look at GTA Online, for example, that came out, what was it, 2013, 2014? And that's still getting updates, I know, like, um, there's gonna be an update for a casino, basically, and I don't know if you run your own casino, or you, or you buy it, or you get to play games in there, okay. Uh, the game begins on an island where there is nothing but vegetation. Players need to choose a governor. The governor must f must find the city and begin its development. Players do not have housing, transport, and, and other property. There are no shops, no roads, no gas stations, no police stations, no hospitals, i.e. the game starts in the raw form. Another meaning of the name is that for the development of cities, players need to harvest raw resources, oil, iron, ore, sand, etc., so basically, like, if you're trying to build, um, like, buildings and that, you're going to need to have concrete. And how you make concrete is you're going to need the necessary materials to mix it in that. And you're going to basically, like, I believe it's in-game money. You're going to have to buy resources, trade with other players, and build up a city. And you can just keep expanding it outwards. You start, like, in the center, basically, or wherever you want to. 
and you expand out. And um, I, for one, am looking forward to buying a house, like, because I won't lie, I think it'd be pretty awesome to be a drug dealer, and, like, you got this whole den just set up, you know, and you're, you're having, you're selling pot to people, and then, you yeah, uh, then, what do you call it, you're getting money for that, and you'd help, and basically you'd be paying your employees, and then that would also be pretty interesting if you're playing, because, like, you'd have to be careful, because maybe, like, another player is running a detective agency, and they're trying to track you down and stop you from this. Because the game mentions that there are contracts. And maybe someone's put out like a contract to have you arrested. Because I've, if you see in the trailer, you can actually go to jail. So I think that would be pretty cool to see. Like, um, someone tries to destroy your drug operation and be like, Oh, hell no. No, this is not acceptable. And like, you probably, if it's going to get a raid, you probably have to escape from the police. Okay, so, um, another meaning of the name is that for the development of cities, players need to harvest raw resources. Yep, I read that. But, like, is are these the only resources? Like, are there other resources we can access? Okay, hardcore RPG means that all the processes taking place in the game will be as close as possible to the same processes in real life. For example, if you buy a car, you need to monitor its technical condition. Because it will break down over time during normal operation. If you want to build a house, you need to purchase materials and find a truck to deliver them to the construction site. To better understand our approach, read the following blocks which reveal it more deeply. So basically, with this here, uh, we could, uh, for example, let's just say you have a plane. And you don't, and you're flying around in the sky and you're not um, giving it proper maintenance. One of the what if it happens if the engines blow up? Boom, engine one, and maybe you could land the plane. But if you if you do, you'd end up like damaging, very badly damaging it because you're trying to land it, but it's gonna crash into the ground. You maybe you survive, maybe not. But uh, yeah, I thought I think it would be pretty cool. This mechanic is gonna be pretty cool. Like maybe you have to maintain your like gardens and that. What if they overgrow? Or like if you have a pool for example, you need to keep that clean if, if you're at a house. And like, and you'd also have to, maintaining a car as well, you'd have to change your tires. Maybe if, they, if they're really going into the seriousness, you'd want to get the oil changed. Because they want to be as close as possible to the same process in real life. So I assume for cars, oil changes, tire changes. You gotta, uh, what do you call it? You gotta get like the engine uh, looked at and cha changed, possibly. Uh, I don't really know too much about cars and that anyway. Uh, you know, but basically, maybe with this game it will help me out. Maybe you could even become a mechanic in the game. So here we go, why crown funding? Initially, we wanted to finish the game without attracting finance from the outside. But a few months ago, after two years of development, we took the, deci the, 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 sorry, the decision to start a campaign to raise money. We have been developing the game on our own for more than two years. Most systems are already finished, multiple inventory maps, multiple, uh, sorry, multiplayer, inventory, map, transport physics, ballistics, player controller, and more. We have a very small team, and to make the final steps to the release, we need to hire more employees. That's why we decided to start a, a fundraising campaign. If we can raise the necessary amount, the a prop, a approximate time of early access 6 to 12 months now um, I've actually looked on the site actually and they are 60% funded so they only need they only need 40% to go and then they're going to hit their market basically they're going to be over they're going to get to 100% uh, I do believe they're going to get to 100% because they've still got 23 more days of crowdfunding left they got 23 days to go, and they're already at 60% funding. Now, um, here we go. Gameplay ov overview. Whoops. I did. Um, yeah. And we also got more stuff down here, like real estate, government, transport, business, uh, work, environment. But I'm going to get all to that later, because I'm still reading this down. It, it's very interesting. So, as we wrote above, the game starts on an empty island, where there is nothing but vegetation. Players must choose a governor. I'm not going to be a governor. I don't want that responsibility. The governor forms a team. Next, the governor chooses the place where the new city will be found and the game starts. 
The government team should develop the city, keep order on the island, provide conditions for a good life of citizens, other players start the game without any property, to earn money they can be employed in the public service, police, healthcare and so on. Do small low paying jobs like picking and selling fruits to try to get a, to try to get a jobs for more wealthy players. If they manage to earn enough money they, they can try to start their own business. We wanted to create such a system that the main gameplay was formed by the players themselves, so we decided to make sure that players, even if they even if they have the financial capacity, did not have an access to all in-game content if they are not involved in raising the, co the quality of life on the island. This means that without the participation of players, only basic resources will be available. For example, Car, car dealership with a pair of cheap rusty cars, general store with the most simple and ne necessary things. If you need good cars, someone has to open a dealership and buy a few cars at a wholesale price in the port and start selling it. Need gas, and someone has to build gas stations. This is apl ap applicable to all objects, whether furniture, spare parts, trucks, airplanes and so on. This approach will form an interesting system of relationships between players and create a lot of different role playing situations. That is, now that is like very interesting and I, I very much would like to play this because in real life like, because I work at a meaningless job, you know, basically, well not meaningless but like, you know what I mean, I just like, I work in a, I work at a shops basically and I help out the back and I move inventory and all that. And uh, so I think this system here would be, this system is very cool, so um, public service, police, healthcare, maybe garbage man, help clean up the city, play as a doctor, like, like it's like, if you couldn't be a doctor in real life, maybe you could be in a doctor in the game, it's like you tried so hard to become a doctor but you ended up a dentist. No, I'm joking of course, dentists are doctors still, they still have the medical degree, I know people make a joke about that and I'm sorry. But basically, yeah, police, but like, for example, police, what type of police, you, could you become a corrupt cop? Could you become a detective? Chief of police, perhaps? Maybe, and I also know, like, the mayor, for example, if you watched in the trailer, he ended up getting in trouble because, um, like, uh, someone wanted gas and he was like, no, and then people were outside and they had picket signs and they were like, oh, we want a new governor, this guy doesn't have our best in interests in heart interest at heart so that'd be pretty good and maybe someone could run against him for governor would be like okay yep i'm going to be running against you because you don't have all these players interests at heart and i am going to and i am going to run and i'm going to run for governor and you could have your own um well, sorry you could have your own campaign slogan and maybe you could be like oh this and you could talk about why you'd be good to help why you'd be a good governor for the town or city, whatever it's called, and why this other guy isn't good for the town. You could weigh the pros and cons. There could be a voting system. Now that would be just amazing. All right, now let's move on to real estate. So it says right here, as in re as in real life, in our game, you will have a hard time without real estate. Each player can purchase a piece of land anywhere on the island, wherever he likes. It can also be she as well, you know, he or she, because I, I assume females, ladies, women, I assume you, you all can play the game. I, I mean, I don't think it's a stereo, stereotypical game where you, only guys can play. I, I assume women can too. As seen, I'm pretty sure there are a few women in the trailer as well. Okay. There are three types of land plots for, resident, for, sorry, for residential real estate, for commercial real estate, and for production. After the, after the acquisition of the land plot, depending on its type, you can build residential, commercial, or industrial buildings. You will have two options, to order the finished building or purchase construction materials and build a structure that you want. In any case, you will need to think about the delivery of building materials or parts of the structure from the store to your site. It is good if you have your own truck, but if not, you will have to rent it or hire another player. Real estate will give real estate will give you a lot of advantages. Now you can open your shop, start a production store, vehicles in the garage, and so on. But be prepared for, the, for an additional headache. You need to pay taxes for the ownership of the land. Taxes for each type of plot are set by the government. If there are problems with 
with the order on the island, there is a risk that your property will be stolen. Therefore, you need to think about installing a good security system, otherwise you risk being left without a favourite car or sofa. If you put a hidden security system, the police will arrive on alert and try to save your property. Because if you remember that uh, from the trailer, you can see players, how they were robbing a guy who had a truck. And there's also um, a bunch of players and they had, what's it called? They had, um, they were broken into somebody's house. And what they were doing was they were um, breaking into that player's safe and stealing all their money. So that's pretty cool. Um, taxes. Do I, I don't even know if I, When do you start paying taxes? I don't know if I pay my taxes or not. I mean, I assume that this comes out of my bank account. Like, if not, then... I don't know what the hell's going on. Okay, okay. But basically, um, this, this is pretty good. So, you got a big house... You get a nice plot of land, you have to pay for it like in real life, because I may be a bum in real life, but in Raw, I'm goddamn successful. I'm like Mick Jagger, I got all that swagger. Alright, so, and that, that would be pretty cool. So, um, you can uh, rob people's houses, and said you can even, um, what do you call it? It says you can even take a person's sofa, so I would assume that um, if you're trying to rob someone's house, what players would do is they get a truck and they'd have to haul all the equipment out like you need um you could you couldn't move a couch by yourself well i mean you could if because i used to be i used to work in removalist with my dad so um if you were to move a couch you'd need two people to help you lift it but you could also um lift it by yourself like depending on how big it is if you put it on one of those leaning i forget what it's called like it's got wheels on it and you can lean boxes and furniture and that on it and just wheel it out. A trolley. Trolley, yeah, that's it. So I think you could do that too, depending on what you did. Now, um, what do you call it? Um, moving on, we got government here. Life on the island depends heavily on the quality of work of the mayor and his team. The government will always have a lot of responsible work. The mayor should monitor the state budget, be responsible for the transportation of money from the state bank, manage taxation, build and modernize state buildings, build roads and bridges. We want to say a little about the state buildings. State buildings are police stations, hospitals, basic shops, public garages, radio towers, prisons, hotels, etc. Their construction will require resources. The mayor and his team will even need... <coughs> Sorry, something in my throat. Uh, the, mayor, the mayor and his... The mayor and his, where am I? Here I am. The mayor and his team will either need to buy these resources at the port or hire people to mine and deliver these resources. This means the government will always be able to pro, to provide people with work. Once the state building is built, it will it will require attention. Let's describe what it means by the example of the police station. The new police station can only be built in the basic version. It will have a place only for one police car and only a few police officers can be hired. If, an, if the number of police officers will not be enough, you will need to upgrade the building, build a bigger garage, and expand employment. There will be several levels of such modernization. Eventually, police stations will be equipped with armored cars and helicopters. This approach should make the co confrontation between the criminal world and the state more interesting. Also, the mayor and his team will need to monitor the inventory of state buildings. For example, the police station will need to supply weapons, ammunition, uniforms for police officers and transport. If the equipment is lost, it will not be restored automatically. The government will have to ensure the supply of the necessary equipment. <coughs> ah, excuse me. So, yeah, that's pretty um, cool. So, um, for police stations, you build up more and more and more police stations. Um, well, not more police stations, but if you like, well, I assume you can get more, but you basically you're upgrading and upgrading again and again and again, and you get more police, and you could have basically, um, because I assume you can rob banks in this, okay, because I assume there's going to be, if you have money, there's going to be, obviously there's going to be a bank, and you can choose to rob a bank, and when you're doing that, you're going to have to have a bunch of police officers and that would be very, in and that's very cool because, like, um, let's just say you have a low, you have a low police squad, like maybe 10 altogether, and you got a bunch of robbers. Now, um, depending on how good of a player you are in shooting games and FPS, 
basically um, if you're um, if you're like to say you're a pro at FPS then and you're a police officer you'd be able to take down criminals easy but that also um, go about uh, what do you call it if you were a robber and you're good at it you could wipe out maybe the you could maybe wipe out the entire police force and that would cripple the city and but the if you had like if you kept as the as the governor if you kept building up on the police station then uh, imagine you could have maybe 20 50 100 police officers and the bank's getting robbed and you got all these police officers just coming and like four or five robbers can you imagine the carnage that would happen Jesus, and basically, I assume as police officers, you can take them alive, or you can go to, or you can um send, you can take the prisoners alive and go to prison and send them to prison, basically. And that brings up like another talk about prison. Um, who would be the warden of the prison, the security guards, the chefs? Now that would be just amazing. I uh, like, I might have to get thrown in the prison just to see it. But our uh, ho hotels. That would, that would be cool. I wouldn't mind going to a hotel and seeing everything, basically. That'd be cool. Okay, um... Where was I on this? Uh... Yeah, um, so basically... Uh, where was I reading again? This means the government always have to provide people with work on the state building. Sorry, I've just um, lost my am where I was talking. Eventually, police stations can be okay. Okay. Um, cons uh, their construction will require resources. The mayor and his team will even need to buy these resources at port or hire people to mine and deliver them. So we got a bunch of miners here too. Once the state building is built, it will require attention. So the new police station can only be built in basic versions. So I assume they're going to be there's going to be better versions later on in the game. Later on in the game. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, the approach should make, a confront should make the confrontation between the criminal world and the state more interesting. Also, the mayor and his team will need to monitor the inventory of state buildings. For example, the police station will need supplies, ammunition, uniforms. Now, that would be pretty good. Now, I assume, like, um, with uniforms and that, wouldn't you need, um, wouldn't you need, like, a washing machine and that? Like, to wash the uniforms? There'd, there'd be a dry cleaners in that, basically, right? Now, um, moving on, we have transport. We wanted to make transport a very special part of the game. In the role-playing game, transport should be very valuable for the players, especially in the early stages of the game. The player must cherish it as in real life. Therefore, we decide that each vehicle will have a failure system. It's like a play of metabolism. The transport will have a specific set of parts with some parameters. For, for example, cars will have engine, suspension, battery, generator, brake system, fuel system. Each part will have its own service intervals. If you do not service your car, it will fall apart over time. The engine will consume more fuel or produce less power. The brake system will lose efficiency. Also, the driving system will affect the speed of wear of the car, of the car parts. If you like to keep the engine in the red zone for a long time, then do not expect that it will last for a long time. Or if you li like to drive off-road on a car that is not designed for it, then you will destroy the suspension very quickly and damage other parts of the car. After purchasing the vehicle, you will need to register it and get a number plate. Of course, each vehicle will have a unique key. Without this key, you can't use it. So maybe... So that's pretty cool. So... Each car, so so each car, you'll need to register it and get a number plate. I don't know if you can name number plates, but I know for people who um, pre-order the game, you can get a unique license plate number. I don't know if you name it or if the backers do. Um, I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, but that that'd be pretty cool, and you can also see there's planes in that, so that'd be pretty cool. You're flying a plane, and all of a sudden. Oh no, you're out of fuel, you fuck now. Okay, um, also oh, the driving system will affect the speed of wear of the car parts. If you like to keep the engine in the red zone for a long time, then do not expect that. So, basically, it's not like, it's not like those, you know those games, um, where, um, I forget, I remember playing this game, I forget what it was called, and it was with a, it had a car, and 
it had like um depending on when you got hit in that some parts of the car would be red and yellow and that but yet that would only happen when you're getting hit so yeah wear and tear is that's another uh thing i'm very interested in seeing i'm um, seeing how that would work so after purchasing the vehicle like this is what i'm confused about you will need to register it and get a number player not confused about that each vehicle will have a unique key without the key you can't use it so how will you be able to steal another person's car will you have to rob the persons of their key and use it would you have to get them and pull them out and would you have to like pull them out and then uh, and then like uh steal the car something like that but i assume you'd have to open the um i assume you have to click off the bell and and then pull them out you know Okay, uh, well, sorry, I just got a message. Alright, yeah, sorry, I'm done. Okay, business. Okay, now here's where we get some getting interesting, and we still got so much more to go with environment, multiplayer. Alright, here we go, here we go, so business. When we came up with the business system, we wanted to make it work like in real life. There is, there is offer and demand, you can propose your products or, ser or services, but if there is no demand, then the business will be unprofitable. So, before starting a business, you need to assess all the risks. If there is already a network of gas stations or dealerships on the island, and you want to open your gas station or start selling cars, then most likely you will not stand, you will most, then you, then most likely you will not stand the competition and go bankrupt. So. That's a cool, that's another cool thing. If you can't handle the competition, if your business isn't good, then you're going to go bankrupt. And that means your employees will go bankrupt too. If you trade through your store, you need to constantly monitor the availability of goods. For example, if you sell trucks, then you need to deliver the trucks from the place of purchase to the place of sale. And if all the trucks are sold out, then you need to deliver a new batch. All earnings will be taxed. This tax is determined by the government. Players will be able to hire other players. For example, if you have a truck and another player has a store and he needs to deliver goods, he can hire you for delivery. Deliver, de delivery. There we go. You can open a transport company and serve several stores. In addition to legal business, it will be possible to engage in illegal business. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. And whoops. This PC is going to go dead, but I'll just plug in the charger. Uh, sorry about this, folks. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. So, illegal business. Yes, this is my jam. If a police on the island is too weak and is not able to resist the criminal world, then you can try to organize a small drug producing plant somewhere far from the cities. Steal cars, interrupt. Yeah, how are you going to steal cars if. If the key, you need the key for the car, do you like, rob the person, do you make them give you the key, like, uh, they really need to better explain this. Uh, interrupt serial numbers and trade with unscrupulous businessmen, ambush collectors at the bank and rob them, so there are going to be banks and we can rob them, nice. But if the order on the island is in good hands, be prepared for the fact that you will not stay without punishment. Ooh, that's not going to be good. Here we go, work. Private businesses is a very risky thing. You can get a lot, but you can also lose a lot. In addition, business requires great effort and responsibility. Not everyone is ready for this, just, just for such people. We will have professions that do not require organizational skills from a person, but it will be possible to receive a stable income, even if not as large as from your own business, but you will not have the risk of going bankrupt. So yeah, like... You cannot, you, like, that'd be awesome, starting your own criminal empire, grow, growing your own weed farm, maybe cocaine, now that would be amazing. If I can't do it in real life, this game will be able to make me do it. Alright, let's try to describe in more detail what the, profession, what the professions will be like on the example of police officer work. The police station will have its own chief, aha, I knew there'd be a chief or a captain, who will be chosen by the government. Each player can try to become a policeman. To do this, he will need to apply to the police station, then head of the station, then head of the station will choose which of these candidates is worthy of employment. Once approved, you will be able to start work as a cop. 
you will receive the key to your locker in the locker room and the armory. If you are hired and you become a police officer, you still will enter the server as a civilian. You will need to come to the police station, put on a uniform and take your weapon. Only after that you can start the service. You will receive a salary in a certain period of time. Chief, the chief of police will receive statistics about your service. If you do your job well, you can expect a raise and bonuses. Ooh! If you can't cope or spend little or spend too little time on the service, it is likely that the head of the station will fire you and hire another candidate. So that would be like, um, for a person who plays the game every single day, it'd be like, oh yeah, um, we're doing a good, you're doing a good job, you're getting a raise, getting a raise, you're gonna get bonuses. I might make you my second in command. But if, uh, for example, it's like, well, let's do this. Let's only go on the game every, every like, for like two days a week you only play the game, then your service wouldn't be as good and you'd get fired and hired by someone else. All other prof profession, blah, sorry, all other professions will work according to the principle. For example, a medic, a tow truck, a driver, a pilot, and so on. We plan to add more and more professions as the project develops, and that is very exciting. Now we move on to the environment. Playable area is approximately 400 square kilometers at the moment. Our, our goal from our goal from the very beginning was to create as much more realistic environment as as we possibly can. Yet it's not perfect and for sure not the best looking one. We definitely want to make a lot of improvements on our current terrain state. The map consists of a large island in the center and many adjacent small islands, but not all islands can be reached at the beginning of the game. The government will have to build bridges to do this. We wanted to make sure that when you leave from one end of the island and come to the other, you would feel as if you are in, are in a completely new world. So we decided to introduce a few different biomes. There are rocky mountains, deserts with canyons, salt lakes, sand dunes, tropical islands, and quarry islands as well. We have plans on adding a few more biomes. Biome. Biome. Or whatever it's called. Um, what do you, each bio, biome consists its own vegetation. Things like trees, bushes, cactuses, rocks, logs, stumps, small sticks, flowers, reeds, grass, and so on. Right now, we are mostly using speed tree models for our vegetation. They are not new and definitely not the best looking ones, especially old series. But we simply couldn't afford to hire any 3D artists to make our own in-game vegetation library for each individual bio biome at the moment. We also actively use mega scans assets for our terrain, which are known for extremely high quality and detail accuracy. We really want to dramatically improve all the vegetation that is currently in the game. It will require a lot of work as well, but we really believe that the final result will be outstanding because high quality environment in our game is a must have. And now we're moving on to multiplayer. So I'm because there's other places like but um you can go to the desert, you can go to snowy areas, um like and I don't know about much else, but like reading from that I would very much like to see if they got maybe a little jungle area. Maybe you can counter animals there, that'd be awesome. Alright now moving on to multiplayer. Multiplayer is almost ready and works stable at the moment. We already had a good teased multiplayer system which we simply adapted to our current project. We plan it's like we plan to open official servers and provide a free dedication server to everyone. The approximate capacity of the server is 100 to 200 players. Wow. One of our goals is to try to make the game fun to play, even if there are not many players on the server. That 100 to 200 players, now that, that is amazing. I'd love to see, like, and uh, maybe they can, if we pledge enough money, they can expand the servers to 300 to 400 people. Now that would be awesome. Okay, now we've got stretch goals here. All these stretch goals will be realized with time sooner or later, but if we raise more funds than we stated, we will accelerate development and, and we'll try... Inclu to include the following feature in early access release. Map works. At the moment the map looks good but we st but still needs to be improved. We need to inspect it meter by meter, add new interesting places, remove empty areas, correct existing errors. Required amount 100,000. So they basically, they haven't gotten to that, they're still on 60%. They haven't reached the first tier yet but... So these are all the ones. Planes and helicopters. 
We have already we already have working controllers for helicopters and airplanes. Everything looks very good, but still need additional improvements as well as performance and quality checks. Then we got boats and motorcycles. The situation with water transport is the same as air transport. Everything looks good, but we need small improvements and tests. The situation is more complicated with motorcycles. So far, we only have a prototype. It requires serious research and development. Electricity and communication. Uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Uh, one of our ideas is to add it is to add to the game the possibility of the mayor and his team to develop the electrical and communication network. Right now, for in-game communication between players, there is a tablet. It catches the net anywhere on the map. We want to add a mobile base station to the mayor's building list. It will have a certain range. If a player leaves the mobile network, he will not be able to receive messages on the tablet, call other players, and use other functions that depend on the availability of the mobile network. In the same way, we want to introduce power lines. If you are near a source of electricity, then you can connect your plot of land to it and use devices that need power to work. So that would that'd be pretty cool. So maybe you could get a phone one day, right? And you got a phone, and um, instead of a microphone, so you can just like call other players and if you have an inbuilt mic in your uh, laptop or if it's like you're using a mic with a headset um, you well, I think it would be cool you can't talk with anyone on the headset you have to call them that's how you communicate now that would be awesome you could also communicate when you're talking to other people but depending on how close and how far away you are that determines what's going on like how they can hear you that'd be pretty good so, advanced metabolism and disease system. Another interesting idea to implement is the system of advanced me metabolism and diseases. At the moment, we have a system of basic me metabolism. It calculates hunger, first air temperature, bleeding, and makes adjustments to the player's health level based on this data. On these data. It's, it's meant to be this data, but it says these data. We want to make metabolism more advanced. We will make simple mathematical models of all human organs connect them and make one organ affect the work of the other. We will also add infections, various diseases, and an encyclopedia of these diseases. For example, each disease will have its own symptoms and treatments. Some diseases will have common symptoms, then the work of the medics and the overall gameplay will be more interesting. Medics will have to choose treatment options more carefully, and if they are not, and if they are not choose it right, then if they do not choose a right, I should say that, there will be a risk that they will worsen the player's condition. And then we got like a bunch of other ones here, like advanced character creation. We don't have a player customization system at the moment. We plan to add the base system in the early access to the game. Um, if we achieve this goal, we will try to implement an advanced character customization system by the time the game is released to early access. You will be able to fully customize the face and body of your character, including height, complexion, facial features, eye color, hair, and so on. Then they got advanced weapons here. We will try to bring the weapon system to a new level. We will add advanced wear system, jamming, misfire, overheating, and so on. We will also make the weapon completely collapsible. Then it will be possible to change butts, barrels, magazines, and other parts of the weapon that will be reflected in shooting characteristics. And will make game process more various and interesting. Then there's modding support. Um, this is not an easy task, especially at the stages. Yeah. So basically, we do not guarantee that we will be able to add this early, add this to early access. And then there's ru runtime road building, and it says this is also a very difficult goal and most likely we will not have the time to fulfill it by the time the game is released in early access but we, will, but we will work hard to realize this goal right now we already have the opportunity to build roads on the island this opportunity is available to the mayor roads can be built from uh prefabricated pieces the mayor can choose the pieces of roads to be built there will be five or six pieces of the road network by Building them one by one. The mayor will be able to cover the entire island with a road network. Ideally, we would like to make sure that the mayor can build roads where he wants. This would add a lot of, of variety to the gameplay because at each start of the new game, there will be a completely different road network on the island. We have already conducted research in this direction. 
It seems that such a system is possible to do, but it will take a lot of work and testing because such a system is not very easy to implement. So that's basically uh, everything about the game Raw. Now I want to talk about this other game, The Last Breath. Or team up with friends. Be on the side of the law or against it. You'll always have a way to succeed. Explore vast open world. Build your dream house. Trade and do business. Run for mayor. Serve the community. Hire or be hired for work. Do cargo transportation. Or just go nuts and live as an outlaw. Alright, so this game I uh, back, I'm a backer to, it's called The Last Breath, and it's got 15 days to go, 59 backers, but it's only on 6%, so really I don't think it's going to get funded, but you know, it still interests me when I saw it, and I decided to back it anyway, because cause it's a pretty interesting one. So basically, um, I, we got some posts up here um, that shows on the Kickstarter, which I'll leave in the, the link below. Basically, um, some of the material posted here is just a work in progress about the main concept of the game, but it's not the final result about graphics, animation, and the general development quality. So here, in The Last Breath, we play as Helen, a woman who, after having suffered a terrible accident, par partially lost her memory. The story takes place in Aspar Town, a fishing village located near Lake Aspar, hence its name. This is a pretty quiet town with a very small population and where tra travelers prefer not to stay long since it does not offer much. Ta town go unnoticed so some celebrities take advantage of their and sorry anonymity to hide from the press and social life. But this does not happen often. As for town has never been the target of scandalous or scandals or crimes, but it harbors a number of mysteries that the locals prefer not to talk about. The last mystery is the disappearance of several women. The police have not ruled on the matter, but the press has been in charge of investigating what happened and tries to make its readers understand that the police are covering, are probably covering up what happened but have no proof of it. Helen is moving to a new house since the place where they lived with her husband before her accident suffered a fire, but Helen does not remember this. Their only source to understand, to understand what happened is the local newspapers and radio stations. In her new house, Helen starts having strange dreams and visions that torment her and make her want to know if they have something to do with her accident. This is when she turns to a specialist who will practice on her a series of regressions through hypnosis and discovers what and discovers what is happening around her, but soon discovers that the cause of her accident contains a line of frightening events that put her life at risk and the town where she lives. And basically, um, I don't know if it's like zombies or anything, but... They got some strange things here, if, as you can, like, I'm not sure if you can see them in the trailer, but, like, when you're scrolling on the Kickstarter, I don't know if they're zombies or not, but they're, but they're something, and maybe, maybe she could be hallucinating these creatures, or maybe, maybe she's dreaming, it's, it isn't really clear cut, but it does, it interests me, like, when I was reading through it, so I was like, oh, okay, sure, I'll take a look at it. Okay, so, um, where, where was I, um, what do you call it, happening around over the course of, uh, um, oh, here we go, it says, and it says here, we want to be a game 98.9% free of jump scares, so it's probably, so it's going to focus less on jump scares and probably more about on survival, but last breath, at least that's how I see it. The Last Breath is a third person mixed with fixed camera angles, a survival horror game with thriller elements. We are obsessed with realism, that's why we aim to develop a game with the most realistic aesthetics possible reflected on a detailed and scary environment. Realism in character design and realism in their movements and expressions. We want to develop a whole detailed universe as possible to give the player a different experience. For that, we are planning many things. One of them is to create some in-game brands and media content to give a richness to the concept of our universe. We really love movies and video games and our main intention is to make something perfectly balanced between them. So we really want to tell a great history full of suspense and true psychological horror. 
not the typical jump scare game. Even so, there will be some times when the player is, fo is so focused on the game that any alteration in the environment can cause him to jump from his chair. But we really want a game free of jump scares because we know that this kind of these type of games are turning into boring and predictable games, and we don't want for our play for our play and we and we don't want it for our players because that's not the essence of true horror or survival game. And also because if in the future we plan to develop a second part of the game, we want the players really looking forward to it. So if if in the future we plan to develop a second game, so. Hopefully this Kickstarter can get funded, so like, if it does really successful, they'll probably make a second one, but I, I don't think it will, and if it doesn't, then they, I don't know, this game might maybe still get made, but then again, maybe it won't, I'm not too sure, because some games I've seen on Kickstarter, even though they failed the Kickstarter, they still end up being made, but they're not as good, so you know. But like it, it really interests me, and I'm like, um, I'd like for it to um, reach 100 100% funding. So, anyways, we want um, okay, where was I? The mechanics of the game. I keep losing when I'm talking to you people. Um, yeah, here we go, here we go. The mechanics of the game consists in driving the character through the different scenarios, achieving progress by overcoming obstacles and solving puzzles, collecting pieces, weapons, key. Keys and other elements are uh, what will allow the character to advance in the story, but we want as well to introduce new simple mechanics while the player while the player advance in the game, so the gameplay don't get repetitive. We want the player feeling the necessity to discover the truth about about the Helen's story as big fans of graphic adventures, classic games, or point and click genre. We put some of this in on our in on the game. Also, sagas like Silent Hill are very important. Are a very important influence for us. We can call this game like a horror interactive police novel or something like that. But we take the concept and create our own game genre called third person thriller. So that's pretty interesting. Cause I remember when I was a kid, I was um, I believe I was six and I played Silent Hill two for a bit and I got up to that bit where you gotta fight that creature for the first time. It's when you get a log of wood and after that I didn't stop playing. I stopped playing because I was like, ah, oh, this game's scaring me. Without me. So, anyways, the character will have a simple inventory in which she can manage the items she collects during the process. But, but the idea is that the idea is that it is not a very complex system, focusing more on the gameplay than the inventory management. Helen must also avoid enemies or fight with them. If a decision is to avoid, it will have a movement system that will allow you to hide behind elements or surfaces in the environment. If you decide to fight, she will have a firearm or melee system to face the threats that surround her. But remember, the game is a survival type, so the resources will be very limited. It will be better to avoid some enemies, it's not doing so could attract more of them and make it harder for the player to advance through one level. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting. So it's like, so it's better to run and hide than stay, than stay and fight. That's essentially what I'm getting from this, because... If you if you're screwing like around like resources are a necessity and you don't want to waste them, it's like if you remember in The Last of Us, there were some instances where you could avoid fighting um, fighting guys like and runners and clickers and that you could easily avoid them in certain most of the time you did have to fight, but there were a few parts in the game where you could avoid fighting raiders and clickers and all that. You could you could use distractions. You could sneak up and use a shiv, and you didn't really need to use um, any weapons at all. So that's pretty pretty good. So it's kind of like the system. So it's like well, I'm not saying it's similar, but it kind of remind it reminds me of that. It says Helen will also have access to different documents that will allow her to understand deeper about how events are connected. Then we move on to environment. We want to maintain something characteristic of the classic survival horror, and it is in and it is the fact that we can develop a story in different scenarios, not just a very extensive one. For this, we have thought of different locations that go according to the story, so the game will be more visually dynamic. We are planning to launch the game for PC on the Epic Store and Steam, but if we reach the respective goal, we will launch the game for PS4 and Xbox One. There's also, um, when you're on the Kickstarter, you'll be able to see some screenshots. When you check, click on the link, you can have a look for yourselves. We've got some work in 
my work in progress footage, pre-alpha game footage, just moving, of her, of Helen moving, some images of the house, concepts made for the game, like, design concepts of Helen, her walking, just a, a bunch of stuff really, not that too much, but down here we got like, um, goals for the first tier is the game gets real, so that's like it obviously gets funded. Then the other one is console lovers port the game to PlayStation 4 and Xbox. Next one is got it supporting other languages sub sub languages sub Spanish, Russian, French, German, and Portuguese. Then let's do a better extension of the game, better animations, more locations, story extension, more characters, etc. Then give me more is DLC development about one of the characters of the story. Extension of the game, also secret ending, that's for, that's for the tier so much more. Turn the pages, we write the novel book about the game story, expanding the universe of the game to non-gamers so you can talk about the story with readers. That's pretty interesting. So, we write the novel book about the game story, and so, you, whether this novel is actually like a graphic novel or just a novel for the book, um, I would read it. I would read it, like, regardless whether it was like a comic book or just a regular book. That'd be very interesting. And then, the last tier is for this summer. We film a short movie or web ser series about the game story, expanding the universe of the game to non-gamers so you can talk about the story with moviegoers. Movie that is pretty cool. So really, this one, like, unlike Raw, it's much shorter, there isn't really that much information we can get from it, but, like, if you want to look up more information, then you will head over to the Kickstarter, which I'll be leaving in the link, in the link below. So anyways, that's really it about this, um, video, it's like, I, I know there's not much on this game, that's why I wanted to talk about it first, so that way, like, you know, because Raw had more information, so get that out of the way first, and then talk about the little, littler game. So anyways, these are both games I've pledged to, and I really hope they both get funded. I'm 100% sure Raw also gets funded, but I'm not too confident about The Last Breath, even though I do want it to be funded. Well, let me know what you all think about this in the comments below, and if you do want to help fund these projects, I've left the link in the description below, so you can go over to the Kickstarter page and, fund, and help fund them yourself. This is Total Gamer Junkie, signing off.